Hello there, aspiring tenos. This video is sponsored by my Discord, where we have interesting discussions about the economics of Warframes and generally just have a lot of fun. I also make a lot of important announcements as well as teasers for new builds and videos. I would like to give a big thanks to my moderators who makes everything work over here as I'm a bit of a dum-dum when it comes to this kind of stuff. So a huge thanks to these guys for making the world go around. Now back to the actual, to the actual video, which very nearly took away my sanity. This was supposed to be an easy video, but it was not. But anyways, in this video, I'm gonna tell you how you can very easily complete every mission, almost, in uh, the Steel Pass on a budget with very little effort. Uh, I will show you how you can complete every mission, but one of them is just not very budget friendly. But let's get to that towards the end. Anyways, on with the first couple of missions. First up, let's go ahead and get the easiest missions out of the way. First, for Spy, Sabotage and Rescue, we're just going to use a basic Loki build with high duration and decent efficiency so that we can be in invisible all the time. These missions all have in common that you do not have to kill anything and in that sense they're no different from uh, normal missions if you're using invisibility because real, the damage doesn't really matter if the enemies can't see you. So. Um, also, this build is obviously complete overkill. You do not need redirection, you do not need mobilize, you don't need any of these arcanes, and you most certainly do not need preparation either. This is just me filling out the build because, well, I had the resources and I felt like doing so. But anyways, I feel like this is pretty self-explanatory, so we're going to move on to some of the missions which you might actually struggle with a little bit. This next part of the video will cover some of the missions that require you to actually kill stuff, which I feel like is where most people struggle. If you haven't really dealt with armor on high level enemies before, which the game doesn't really force you to do until you enter onto the steel path, then you might really struggle with it. So this build right here is about as budget as it gets, but it's really, really powerful. This build utilizes one of the new mods that we got with the new war update, and it's Borals Contempt. Let's go ahead and take a look at what this mod does. Right, it has some base melee damage, which is fine. We could get more from pressure point, but with, we've decided to run this instead. And we want to run this because of the 60 damage from stasis effects. The thing about the Gwendeo Prime and the Authors Prime as well, if you want to use that, it's a little bit more accessible. I just prefer the look of the Gwendeo Prime. Uh, the cool thing is that it has a lot of slash damage, so it's very easy to bleed the enemies, which will go directly through armor. We're using these mods for additional status chance for more procs and to get some viral on as well, as it's a very powerful status effect. Now, as you can see here, these are not leveled up and these should be kept unranked so that we do not overwrite the uh, primary damage type uh, slash with viral. We want slash to be the primary damage type. We are running weeping wounds for more status chance once again and a little bit more, well, a lot more critical chance when at full combo counter. Because of this, you have to use the narrow mon focus school so that your combo counter don't deplete all at once and also, this is not required, but I do recommend it. You should use the secondary dexterity arcanes. These are very cheap and you can go ahead and throw it onto your secondary weapon. And if you're only going to be dealing damage with your melee weapon, then you might want to go ahead and put on primary dexterity as well. They're both very cheap and can be gotten for 30 platinum total, for both of them. All right, so this is basically our all purpose build here now obviously this build is really decked out and we don't need all of the umbra mods it's very nice to have it gives you a little bit of extra damage and a bit of extra survivability but it doesn't kill the build not to have it the expensive part here is arcane guardian but i really suggest that you go ahead and get it even if it is a bit expensive it will give you a immense amount of tankiness i, I put it as my like third most powerful arcane in my uh, arcane rating which is one thing that people seem to be able to agree with at least and um get it it's really good now you can see here that i have infused satis whisper onto chroma and that's because there is an interaction between um beam 
and the non-projectile weapons and the void bubbles that the void status effect creates and that's basically what we want here then we're using the cold version of chroma second ability for some extra tankiness as well as some damage the combination of sasa's whisper and the second ability of chroma here is incredibly powerful and i'll go ahead and demonstrate that in game in a moment so the weapon that we will be using is the kuva new core and um, you can also use the ignis wraith it is almost as powerful close to equally powerful this is the budget version if you want to go and use that and it's the one i'll be demonstrating in this video but if you want to go for a more optimized build it's going to look something like this now let's go ahead and show you what it looks like in game Now, as you might have noticed, this setup cuts through the enemies with little difficulty. And the damage doesn't really come from the Kuva New Core. It's a great option to use here and it's a pretty powerful weapon overall, so I do recommend that you get your hands on it. But if you only have something like the Ignis Wraith, it will use uh, I'm sorry, it will work uh, equally as well. The damage really comes from this the build can damage very like it's easily handle from a second even ability, without all as remote. well as the way that it easily handle interacts with the void bubbles. Exterminate which, as a quick survival comes from Satas Whisper and so on. That it can even do excavation though attacks. I will say it struggles well, anyways, a little bit on, on that, with the rest but it can do it. So is there something which it can't do? Yes, there is. And I've been testing for it for two hours now and I was about to lose my mind. I wanted to come up with some creative solution, but I'm just going to tell you this right now. I really hate the disruption game mode. The difficulty, the way that it just spikes uncontrollably all of a sudden. I don't like that. But so anyways, let's just go ahead and talk about the solution. You don't care about my struggles getting there and that's fine. Obviously, you just want the solution. So what I the idea that I eventually just had to go with was to use Korra. And the reason why Korra is so good at taking out these demo lists is the fact that she has her, um, what is the C config here? She has the ensnare. Ignore this. This is nothing. Um, she has her ensnare and this works on the demo lists. And yes, they can clear themselves off the CC, but the second that they do so, you can cast it on them again so quickly that they don't even get to move. So as long as you have energy, you can just keep throwing this down on the demo lists and then using the same build on your, um, okay, this is a dual sword. We don't really want to use this, but the Gwendeo Prime build that I showed you before, you're going to be able to kill them pretty easily. I'll go ahead and, uh, probably just show this on screen. You can see that, yes, it is possible to kill them just using the setup. It's a little bit tedious and no, it's not the most efficient setup, but all of the other options that I could find just cost so much and it was not budget friendly whatsoever um so yes go ahead and uh and use this setup then you'll be able to at least get through the steel path um and let's be real for the most part you're just gonna play survival uh for, to, to farm resources and uh for like the, the challenge of it so i feel like it's most relevant to talk about builds that do well there uh, that's coming up in a different video I almost forgot to talk about Warframe, okay, sorry, Operator Arcanes. They are not, however, irrelevant. They're actually very important. And there are two which really sticks out to me. There are two kinds of Magus Arcanes, which are the Arcanes with Operator. The ones which the Operator benefits from, which is pretty much only used for Eidolon hunts. And then there's the rest. And among the rest, the two which really stands out to me is Repair and Lockdown my uh, face in the way it's not okay so with repair uh i should really max this out i just haven't quite done it yet you will be able to heal for 25 i think it's 30 percent actually of your um of your health 
every second while being outside of your warframe and using a void mode. And it's not just healing yourself, you're healing your team as well. So pretty much all of the heal that you could ever need, you can gain through this. Is it the most convenient way of healing? No, but it's extremely cheap considering how much power it holds and it can pretty much be slotted into any build and it will instantaneously solve all of your healing problems. Next up, we have Magus Lockdown. And um, Magus Lockdown is, sorry, I was getting distracted by the chat. Magus Lockdown has the ability to lock down enemies whenever you use your Void Dash. You will drop a mine, a tether it says, and it will lock down up to 10 enemies in a radius of 15 meters for four seconds. So basically, uh, once in a while you'll, you'll uh, jump out of your Warframe, go into Void Mode to heal, dash while you're doing that to essentially CC all of the enemies around you. This has no cooldown and it can be spammed multiple times and yes, you can drop multiple mines, tethers at the same time. So this combination basically gives you a solid CC and all the heal you could ever want all in your Warframe. So absolutely go ahead and run these. There are scenarios where you would want to run other arcanes over these, but as a baseline, this is a really solid place to start. No, it's still the same recording session, okay? Nothing has changed. Anyways, I forgot to mention this. This is my Plants of Warper Phyla. And if you truly want to do yourself a favor, go ahead and get your hands on one of these. They're not very difficult. Well, okay, they're somewhat difficult, but not overly difficult to get your hands on. And in terms of like low maintenance, but still a lot of useful combative ability, nothing really beats the plants of Opophila in my opinion. There's two reasons for this. First up, it has this ability called Viral Quills, which essentially applies the viral damage type and the viral status chance uh, effect, sorry, to all of the enemies available in the immediate vicinity, which is exactly what I would want from a companion, it's basically guaranteed viral procs. Perfect. And then also it has Panzer Devolution, which essentially whenever it dies, it becomes a sentinel for a period of time where it will continue to shoot its quells at the enemies. Uh, and then it will just reemerge as its former self. Now I'm still using health link and armor link Oh, sorry, this is pack leader. I'm using armor link as well, just to try and keep it alive a little bit more. But for the most part, this is the basis of it. If you are a little bit more powerful and you want more loot, then you should use a Smeta Kavat with Charm mod instead to get more resources. This is mainly useful if you're playing something like Korra with her Pilfering Strangle Dome on survival missions. But I digress. This is pretty much everything that I wanted to show you. This is a pretty good uh, introduction to steel path with these items you're going to be pretty much okay there are more efficient ways to do this for example you can take out my build on the rook but in terms of budget and being able to just get through the steel path this is a pretty damn good option anyways i guess i'll just see you in the next one